Hey, good afternoon, everybody. How you doing? It's Mitch Steele, and I'm here in Ventura. Uh, that's not such an unusual thing. I live here. Uh, but what is unusual is I'm going to be taking a look at a powerboat. Uh, if you've seen my other videos, I pretty much normally focus on sailboats. Uh, I own a sailboat, and that's the style of, uh, of sailing I like to do, or uh, boating I like to do. But uh, today we're going to take a look at uh, something different. Uh, the boat we're going to be looking at is over here. It's a 1994 41-foot Silverton aft cabin convertible. So uh, yeah, this will be really interesting. Uh, she shows really well from the outside. Uh, you know, it'd be hard to, to tell that it's uh, from 1994. It looks pretty clean. So yeah, let's go check this out. It should be interesting. This is Serenity, a 41-foot Silverton aft cabin sun deck built in 1994. On the standard version, this whole back area would be open, making it a great boat for fishing. Serenity, however, is the aft cabin version, which is made by closing in the aft deck and adding the sun deck above. This makes Serenity an absolutely perfect liveaboard, as well as being great for pleasure cruises out to the local islands. Serenity looks to have been very well maintained and looks great for a 26-year-old vessel. All right, let's go aboard and check her out. Being the owner of a sailboat, where much time is spent on the deck while underway, mostly working, I wonder what one would do on the foredeck of a powerboat like this. The only functional elements on the deck is the power windlass and anchor. But I guess once you are anchored, you have all of this wonderful space to lay out and sun yourself. I have images of a bikini dance party. Okay, back to reality. Let's go back and check out the rest of Serenity. Here we are on the aft sun deck. As I mentioned earlier, on the standard version of the Silverton, this deck would not be here and we'd be standing one deck below. But I really like having this raised deck. It's a great place for hanging out and entertaining and has terrific views. It's a bit of a climb down to the swim platform. Might be easier and more fun just to dive from here. There's a small sink here with some storage for cleaning and barbecue supplies and whatnot. Okay, let's head up to the flybridge. Like the sun deck, the flybridge is completely enclosed by a canvas cover with what looks to be fairly new isinglass. There's the captain's chair and the panel with all of the controls for piloting the boat. Not a rope, line, or block in sight. Shows you how little I really know about power boats. Here you have the throttle and forward reverse controls for the two 355 horsepower gas powered engines. Also the compass, gauges, and switch panel for all of the external lights. Serenity has a suite of Raytheon electronics, which includes a GPS chart plotter, radar, and autopilot. There's also a standard horizon fathometer and an ICOM VHF radio. There's a SETI here on the port side for several guests to keep the captain company while underway. Also a wonderful 360 degree view. Okay, let's head down to the main salon. Wow, what a wonderful space. So open and bright. I've had apartments smaller than this. There's a comfortable SETI for just hanging out and relaxing. And Serenity also comes with a forced air and heat system. And you know that this is the place where the parties are because here's where the ice maker is.
The main circuit panel is behind this cabinet and has all of the circuits for the 12 volt, 110, and the Kohler generator. The cabinets are stained cherry and all look to be in terrific condition, and there's plenty of storage. Here's the entrance to the aft stateroom, but we'll get back to that later. But first, let's head forward to the galley and dining area. There is a small but functional L-shaped galley with a good amount of cabinets for storage. The three-quarter size refrigerator is certainly much bigger than what I'm accustomed to on my boat. The cooktop is a two-burner electric top with a microwave just below that. This galley is designed for quick, efficient cooking, but still very functional. The dining table is large and looks like it can seat six or seven people. The thing that impresses me most about this space is the openness. It reminds me of a New York style loft, something I would just never equate with on a sailboat. On the starboard side, there is a head. The toilet is a vacuum flush system, which clears the bowl quickly and completely by simply pushing down on the foot pedal. There's a good sized enclosed shower with a bench and the sink and mirror. There is a separate entry here that leads to the forward stateroom. This is a very roomy area with a good sized pedestal bed in the center. It's bright and cheery and has a good amount of those cherry storage cabinets on either side also with a good size hanging closet. Okay, let's go check out the aft stateroom. Here we have another good size bed with convenient paths around the sides, making getting in and out of the bed very easy without disturbing your mate. There's a sit-down vanity, which I'm sure the ladies will love. And here's a closet with hanging rod on both sides and several drawers below. The aft berth has its own head. It also has the vacuum flush system. There's a sink with plenty of counter space and a nice sized shower enclosure. As we come back out, there are these recessed shelves and cubby for a TV. It's great that these don't project out into the room. This adds to the overall spaciousness of the cabin. Again, just to compare this model of the Silverton, on the standard version, this whole area would be completely outdoors. The transom would be right here with a short ladder leading to the swim platform. While the open version would make for an ideal fishing boat, I think this aft cabin version is much more ideal and would make for an excellent liveaboard. There's one last thing to check out and that's the engine room. So let's go. The engine room is accessed from this panel in the main salon. While there's not enough room to stand up in here, there's still plenty of room to maneuver around and to get to all of the critical components. As mentioned earlier, Serenity is powered by two 355 horsepower gas engines. I believe that these are the original engines, but amazingly, they only have just over 200 hours of runtime. Cruising speed with the two engines is about 15 knots, with a top speed of around 18 knots. All of the routine maintenance components are easily accessible. There are fuel tanks on either side with a total capacity of 408 gallons. Here is the Kohler genset that I mentioned earlier. This area also houses the water heater, 
power converter, charger, and four house batteries, which I believe are fairly new. All right, that's pretty much everything. Serenity is an extremely well laid out power boat in what I'd say is turnkey condition. She makes for a great liveaboard as well as a place to entertain friends and family.